Hello and welcome to our service as we celebrate the second Sunday in Epiphany. And it's a pleasure to have you join with me from wherever you are. I know we have people who watch in Canada, in Wales, in Dorset, as well as our own worshipping community in Bromborough. And there may be others too. So you are all welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Loving God, we've come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we sing our first hymn, which is a carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see things which we didn't even know we should have done. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself to us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word 
and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and for ever. Amen. And now Jill is going to read to us. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at first, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite, in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. There are two significant themes in the text that we've heard today. The first theme is about being called, called into faith and called into service. And the second is epiphany, not surprisingly, because that's the season that we still continue to celebrate in the church. The revelation of who Jesus Christ is, and he is referred to in multiple ways in this text. So first, calling. Calling, we can see from the text that, Jesus, that Jill read, Calling comes in two different ways here. First of all, Philip is called directly by Jesus. Follow me, an instruction, a command, an imperative. And Philip does so. He sees in Jesus exactly who he is. The one that Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets. And his response to being called into the discipleship of Jesus is to go and tell somebody else. So Nathaniel's calling comes in a slightly different way. First, his friend Philip reveals to him who he has found. I found the one that Moses speaks about in the law and the prophets. And then, having had the way made for him, Jesus himself speaks to Nathaniel. And he speaks to him as if he knows him deeply, having only just met him. And he says to him, here in this man is an Israelite with whom there is no deceit. And that's quite something if you think about the people uh, who were often flocking around Jesus, the Pharisees and others who um, did not always tell the truth and were not always honourable and straight with Jesus and those around him. Nathaniel is bowled over by this revelation of himself that comes through Jesus, brought in, opened up to being receptive by his friend, and then Jesus entering into his life. And he says, how can you know me? And Jesus almost ironically says, well, I saw you under a fig tree. But that's not the point, is it? It's that Jesus knows him internally already. Jesus knows you and he knows me. Why? Because as well as being holy man, he is holy God. And as Christians, we believe that God made us. It's not just the first disciples who were called. 
we too are called, called into faith and called into service. The service is always a part of being called into faith. We have sometimes very particular ideas about what that service looks like. You may say that I've been to be been called into the church because I wear this collar. But I was called to be a daughter long before that, a sister. I was called to be a wife and a mother before uh, the calling to the church. I very much believe that teaching for me for the 20 years in which I did it was a vocation. And for parts of that time teaching, I actively sought out difficult schools and children that were often overlooked because I believed that the teaching that I was doing came out of what God had given me as a gift. You in faith have already been called. You may have been called to be a wife, a husband. You may have been called to be a father or mother. You may have been called to be a good friend. You may have been called to be a teacher or a pupil. And that calling may go even further. It may call you into a particular type of work. And then it could be that you are called into work for the church. Those people who stand at the front are important. The people who do the readings and the prayers, are people like me who lead the worship. But I always see from where I stand at the front of church, others who are called, whose role is so important that I could not do my job without them. Those who are called to welcome people into the building, to provide in different times hospitality, uh, biscuits, cake, uh, pastries, coffee, and to make sure that people feel welcome and comfortable within our building. Some, like Fiona Austin, called to secretarial work on our behalf, like Natalie and Thalma into being the treasurers, uh, like jo Jenny Hope to be the jack of all trades, but in particular at the moment to be our church warden, the one who has oversight of the maintenance and the sustaining of our ministry. So many ways in which we are called. And most importantly, we are called perhaps to preach, but particularly to listen. Those of you who sit in the congregation, those of you who are hearing and watching this now, you are called and then having received to go out and to speak to others. Often in around Pentecost, we think about thy kingdom come. It's a prayer initiative which crosses the whole world now. And for the last few years, you've been invited to pray for five people that they will come to faith. I wonder who those five people are. Do you remember who you prayed for last year or the year before or the year before that? I want to suggest that you begin to pray for them again if you have stopped, that you don't wait until Pentecost, that you don't even wait until we're all back together inside of a building, but that you start to think about who it is that you want to know God and that you begin to pray for them and their relationship with Jesus. And more than that, you perhaps begin to think about how you can actively reveal Jesus for who he is. And that takes us to the second part of our text, the second theme, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of him as Messiah, as Rabbi, as Son of God and Son of Man, the teacher who began teaching at 11 and gave us a glimpse of what is to come when he lost his parents in the temple and yet sat and was wiser than the adults around him. There is a great deal of wisdom in all children, but in this one in particular, the knowledge of his father enabled him to speak and teach to others. We recognise him as the one who is spoken of in the law and the prophets, the Messiah. You need to make sure that people understand something of that. We learn of him as the son of man, fully and wholly human, one who can empathise with our lives, the one who became the scapegoat, the one on whom whose shoulders uh, became the, the burden of all of our sin, 
and who paid the price for us. And the Son of God, the holy, spotless and blameless human, who was not just man, but God himself revealed on earth and present with us. God who was willing to die and rise again, who brings into our daily living a hope which the world cannot give. There is nothing on earth that can offer to us the same kind of hope and promise that comes in Jesus Christ. And that's not just about the hope that we can receive uh, at the end when we die. It's the glimpses of hope that we receive now. It's the light that shines in the middle of the darkness. It's the, the pinpricks that seep through when we are at our lowest ebbs. And I hope that as we move through Epiphany, and not far off is Lent, where we begin to reflect on uh, how we behave and what we think and believe as disciples of Christ and prepare ourselves for the coming of, uh, for the resurrection of Jesus. But that you fully embrace thinking about your own calling. What is it that you've been called to? It needn't be a change of career or circumstance. But remember that in the calling of faith, you are also called into service. It could be that first you need the faith. It doesn't matter how able-bodied you are. You may be elderly and infirm, but God will continue to use you. And the other element that I want you to spend time thinking about is who Jesus is. Who is he in your life? And where do you see him? There are lots of jokes about the pandemic. Uh, one in particular someone sent me today. We're on day 27 of lockdown, the, the third lockdown, and the dog is looking at me with that look on his face that says, now you know why I chew the furniture. Pandemics are hard. Lockdowns are harder. This is a difficult time. But I encourage you, to seek out the light in the darkness, the hope in the midst of what is otherwise a difficult time. God is with us. He is a God who is alive and living amongst his people. And I encourage you to look at the world in that way as we move into the week ahead. Amen. We are firm together our faith in God. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And now Ian is going to lead us in our prayers. Dear Lord and Father of all humanity, we bring our prayers to you not just for this day, but for every day. The everyday world in which we try to follow you from dawn to dusk, but often lose our way. In this day-to-day -day world, we depend utterly on so many people you give us. In our prayers, we celebrate them. Thank you for them and pray for their well-being. When we get up in the morning, we depend on the workers in the water industry to supply us with water for the shower, power workers who enable us to turn on the light in the kettle, radio broadcasters who give us instant information about a day's news, and so many others. Thank you, Father, for each one, for their skill, judgment, and willingness to get up early. Bless our everyday people. As the day gets underway, we depend on transport workers who keep train and bus services and maintain our roads system. We depend on shop workers who provide for our necessities and our whims. We depend on gardeners who keep our parks and flower beds beautiful and street cleaners who street keep our streets usable. We depend on IT maintenance teams to keep our computers running. Thank you, Father, for each one. 
for their contribution to the complex web of support that keeps us all connected. Bless our day-to-day -day people. As the day wears on, we depend on the long chain of supply that brings coffee from around the world to our kitchen or our desk. We depend on telephone engineers who keep us in touch with everyone else. We depend on the underpaid people who run sandwich shops and eating places. We depend on sewage workers who perform a vital task. Thank you, Father, for this army of people who enabled us to get on with what we have to do. Bless our everyday people. We come towards the evening. We've depended on teachers to equip our children for life. And especially at this time, medical staff to be ready for our illnesses and accidents. Writers who prepared the scripts for the evening's TV. Cleaners who go through our offices. So many people, so much we take for granted. Thank you, Father, for the gifts we all bring to the engines of our society and the health of our people. Bless our day-to-day -day people. And bless, Lord, also those who now stand and wait, those who stay at home and their working lives at an end. Enable them to value the dignity of rest, the wisdom of experience and the possibilities of the third age. For all of us are in your hands and the web of life is incomplete without any of us. So Lord, bless our world. Bless it with thankfulness and fulfilment. Bless it with kindness and hope and bring it finally to completion in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collet for the second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And I invite you to join with me now in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing a second carol now. It's a fairly new one, but those of you who were able to be in church and those of you at home will remember that we've sung it several times already. It's become a favourite of mine and it is What Can I Bring?
our service. Uh, we've had several birthdays in the congregation while we've been away. I know that Jan Harper was 80 just a few weeks ago. So a very happy birthday to you, Jan. And that Olwyn, who won't see this, but who we can wish a very happy 94th birthday next week. Our final prayer. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now God's blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.